In Greek mythology, Prometheus steals fire from the chief god Zeus and gives it to humanity. Zeus is fuming about this and as retribution gives Prometheus what looks like a present, Pandora's box. Prometheus opens it only to release all sorts of evil on the earth, war, death, disease, suffering. He quickly slams the lid shut when he realises what is happening, trapping one last thing in the box, hope. His dilemma, is hope the final and worst of all things or is hope the armour that protects us from all other evils? That's our question for today. G'day, I'm Paul Clark, Senior Minister at Redcliffe Uniting. Great to have you with us again. As always, like, subscribe, donate if you like what we do. Hope. The Bible lists it among the greatest of all things, faith, hope and love. We had Professor Dennis O'Hara here a couple of years ago at one of our breakfasts. He studies hope. He said, hope is one of those things everyone knows about, but until recently, hardly anyone has studied. He wrote a book on hope. It's a very good book. Hope is an essential ingredient in life. Apparently, it makes up 15% of improvements people experience in counselling. Without hope, it's hard to sustain life. Viktor Frankl discovered that in surviving a Nazi concentration camp. To lose hope is to lose the will to live. I know loss of hope is part of many suicides. Hope is an intangible thing with tangible effects. So how do we find hope? Where do you get this precious commodity? Is it something we're born with or can we grow it? If you're like me, you're feeling this COVID year. Is the pandemic an act of God or is it simply the groaning of creation under the weight of humanity's insatiable appetite for more? Now that makes sense. That's how we've been created, to fight for life. Is creation fighting to live? Is the treatment for COVID, halts and lockdowns, just as bad as the disease? If COVID doesn't kill you, job losses, business closures and isolation will. Many are saying we haven't seen the worst of it. The mental toll of natural disasters usually happens 12 months later and we're yet to face life without JobKeeper. Is it a coincidence that all this is happening as the political systems of the world are groaning? What happened to truth and integrity, character and duty? Historians actually are saying America has been in the same polarized political situation they are now in the past. Phew! Uh, that was, though, right before America's Civil War. Wow, we need to pray for America and our world. I, I read another article that argues social trust in America is collapsing. The left don't trust the right and vice versa. The public don't trust government or institutions like the police. When public trust is gone, social disintegration isn't far behind. The good news, the article pointed to Australia as a nation that still has good levels of public trust. We've trusted our government and been spared the worst of COVID. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm naming what you are all already acutely aware of. So much so that many of you have stopped watching the news. At the same time, I know that for many of you, that's just noise. Your own health, your own family situation, your own mental and spiritual torments mean it's a miracle you're even able to listen to this sermon. As Paddy says, the ocean is so big and my boat feels so small. How do we find hope even at times like this, especially at times like this? Hope is a grounded optimism that things will work out. It's more than optimism, a positive outlook based on experience or genes, and it's more than wishful thinking, wishing things were true without any evidence. Hope that makes a difference is grounded. It's 
based on something. If you look at all the incidents of the word hope in the New Testament, they aren't talking about hope as a standalone quality, but as something that is generated because of something else. Look at our own reading today. Not only the creation, but we ourselves groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we are saved. We hope in our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. Give me an amen if you long for that. In this hope we are saved. We see from this that hope is what arises from trust. Hope is what is birthed from trusting in a promise from someone who is trustworthy. Amen. Speaking of birth, babies discover themselves as helpless souls at the complete mercy of these strange things called mama and dada. They can only cry and must instinctively trust their parents. If their parents behave in trustworthy ways, hope is born. Hope is healthy, cathartic. If the parents aren't trustworthy, children develop anxiety, which is toxic to their health. Hope is birthed from trusting in someone who is trustworthy. Someone who is powerful can deliver on their promises. This is really important. Hope must be built on something and someone who is trustworthy or, is, or it is false hope, wishful thinking. In the movie The Shawshank Redemption, Red says to Andy that hope is a dangerous thing in prison. Hope that better is coming. Hope that you will get out. It will drive a man insane in here because it is baseless. But Andy knows something Red doesn't. This takes us all the way back to our opening story. Hope can be the armour to get us through all the struggles and evils we face in life. Or it can be the last piece of false news that dashes us on the rocks of reality. False hope, trust in someone who is not trustworthy, is the last step before betrayal. So we better make sure our trust is in someone who is trustworthy. And we all know the answer to that. God is the only one who is trustworthy, who is powerful enough to deliver on their promises. Yet COVID has done something. COVID has exposed where our trust truly lies. For me too. Has my trust been in myself and my own ability to pull things through? Has my trust been on my job or my health, my everyday repetitive and safe routines? Has my trust been in the institutions of government and corporations that appear to be eternal? It's okay to trust these things to a certain extent, but our ultimate trust must be in something that is ultimate. If you are finding yourself flailing at these times, it's worth trying to work out what has my trust been in? Has COVID knocked that down? How can I put my trust in God? Or it could be, how has COVID exposed my false theology of God? I thought God wouldn't make me suffer, but I am. It's your theology that was faulty, not God. There is only one eternal thing. His word lasts forever. If you want to build hope into your life, you need to develop your relationship your trust in God. You need to go to the well of God's word and drink deep in his promises and decide if you believe. I love Romans 8. I consider that our present sufferings, our present sufferings are not worth comparing, are not worth including in the same sentence as the glory that will be revealed in us. What a statement. If only we believed, trusted it, hope would spring eternal. I've been suffering when I've read that verse and it's helped me. 
Our future is so good in God that our present sufferings will feel like a bad dream. Do you believe it? Do you want to believe it? To get hope, hold on to God's promise of eternity. He outrageously promises eternity. Janita shared one of these promises, and we had more of those promises in the drama, and the drama tried to explore it deeper. Because here's the thing about Christianity. Christianity does not promise you won't suffer. You won't have pain. You won't grow old and get dementia. Your marriage won't break up. You won't be poor. If you're hoping for a get God and nothing bad happens religion, you're in the wrong club. God promises to walk with us through the valley of the shadow of death. That in all of life's turmoil, God is working for the good of we who love him. Why does God do it this way? Because God is interested, as our reading says, in us being conformed to the image of his son. Because when we are, we will be the second, third, fourth, millionth born of many brothers and sisters. There's something about pain and suffering and trusting God through it, hope that prepares us for eternity. What did I read recently? Calm seas do not make skillful captains. And that is all well and good. That is all sentimental claptrap and cliches until and unless we look at the cross. Why can I trust God in this? Because God went first, all the way. All the way to Bethlehem and Nazareth. All the way around Galilee and Samaria. All the way to Jerusalem and the temple. The Garden of Gethsemane and Pilate's courtyard. All the way down the Via Della Rosa and all the way to Golgotha and the very depths of hell. You can trust God because he led the way. He went there. He went first. He rose again and is seated at the right hand of God in glory, saving a seat for you. If you doubt God's love, if you doubt God's goodness, there's the proof, the cross of Christ. See the King of glory. Hold on to God's promise of eternity. Go to the well. Spend time in the promises and choose to believe and hope will spring eternal. Let's pray. Lord God, we, we desperately need hope at a time like this. COVID has shaken our world. It has pulled the rug from out of us. It has torn down the walls that protect us. It has exposed our poor theology and our poor discipleship. Are our eyes on you, the author and perfecter of our faith? Or are our eyes on other things? Lord, hope springs from trust in a trustworthy person and the promises you've, they've made. Lord, you have promised us so much. You've promised us eternal life a world with no pain and suffering. It seems that in this world, you are creating the new. Paul, as we've heard in our Galatian study, talks about the new creation, that to get to the next world, we must journey in this world. And our journey involves the valley of the shadow of death. It involves suffering, death, disease. It's in hanging onto you, gripping onto you by our fingernails, that somehow you transform who we are, your spirit in us, rebirthing, renewing who we are. So Lord, today, help us to fix our eyes on you. Help us to, to spend time in the well of your word. 
to find your promises, to gather those around us who share these truths, that we might bear each other's burdens, that we might carry each other through these days, that we might become an oasis for the world of hope. We pray this in your mighty name. Amen.